Well, we're out on site today for our first EV charger install in 2024. We're going to be fitting this new Seren EV charger, replacing an old Tesla charger. Now remember, back five or six years ago when you used to fit EV chargers, you had earth rods. So we're going to be tying onto an old TT supply. Now, the weather, absolutely glorious today, but it's January. Glorious weather like this means it's absolutely freezing as well. So we're going to try and get this done before the predicted snow comes in. So let's have a look at what we've got in the box. This is an untethered charger, so socketed, as sometimes said. Open the box, nice paper packaging, no plastic in here. Uh, it's good to see we've got a drill mounting template, so hopefully that will be useful. We've got the all essential screws. We'll see how good they are. And here is the charger itself. Now you can have different colored clip-on fronts that we'll have a little look at later on. One of the unique things that we like about this charger is it's got this lit up panel at the top. So a lot of people, when you're installing chargers, if you get about lighting in the area where you need them. So it'll be interesting to see how that performs later on when it gets dark. Hopefully we'll be long gone by then, but we're in an area with no street lights. So that could be a really useful feature. So we've got the unit mounted on the wall, or rather Rick has, and you'll notice he didn't get a new pair of gloves for Christmas. A few things we've learned, obviously this is a random stone wall which is always a challenge keeping something flat and secure onto it. So we've used some stainless steel space as just to space the charger uh, off the wall. The drill template was brilliant along with the marksman. We got spot on uh, with those holes there. Case is really robust, so it doesn't twist even though we've spaced it off the wall. One thing we have learned, the screws on the front here are captive, but they're held in place by small O-rings. Obviously stop the screw from dropping out. Little top tip when you're undoing those screws, the six of them on the front cover, don't go too far otherwise you might lose the o-rings so a great tool we found over christmas was this wire stripper that goes in your drill but we've just tested for the first time on this it's fantastic on xlpe insulation which is typically what you find in armored or the tough sheaf version that we've used here in our ev ultra cable in here bags of wiring room easy to wire in with these screwless terminals here as well uh, in terms of data connection two options so you've either got uh, a wi-fi connection where we were quite a bit a distance from the uh, the router here so we've uh, played it safe and we've wired in the cat5 cable as part of the ev ultra they obviously have to make off into an rj45 socket in there the charger itself obviously has to comply with the smart charge point regulations and you can tell the sort of things that manufacturers do that we've got this plastic cover here and a little micro switch there that would obviously send you an alert via the app if, uh, if someone's been tampering with it. Early in the video, I said we're hoping to get this job done before the snow arrived. Clearly that hasn't happened. We're a day later, actually two days later, because we couldn't even get in here yesterday. We found a problem, nothing to do with the charger. It's when we're doing our earth loop impedance tests, we found that the uh, connection down to that earth rod is above 200 ohms, which obviously means it is unstable and does need, I uh, will say, further investigation. Um, but interestingly, here's a journey of self-discovery for you here. Look at what happens to soil resistance when the temperature gets cold. And it is minus 10 here today. You will notice Rick's now got the Makita heated jacket on. So the solution, we're not going to start trying to dig through the permafrost to try and improve the resistivity of that earth electrode. We're going to actually just connect it to the PME or the TNCS supply that comes into this property. And we can do that because the charger has got built-in protection for PME faults, so we shouldn't have a problem with that. While we're on the subject of protection, uh, the charger itself has got the DC leakage protection built in, but of course does rely upon a type A RCD upstream, and that is also protecting the cable out to the charger. Ooh, it's actually quite warm now that sun's catching us. I've just gone down with a t-shirt while Rick's still got that jacket on. Junction box here we've converted from the one where we used to uh, make the connection to the earth rod and instead we've brought in another CPC so we can connect to the uh, TNCS earthing system in the property. It's also the point where we convert from the EV Ultra cable which if you're not familiar with is a combined power and data cable. So we have to split off the data and the power, which vanishes into the uh, data or trunking, but it's often when you're doing an EV charger install, the data uh, point in a property is completely in a different direction 
from the power connection. So people ask us how we do that. So we've just cut back a short length of Cat5 cable within the PV Ultra and then just terminated an RJ45 connector and then used a coupler into another Cat5 cable that goes off to the uh, network switch via the dado trunking. So there's a few things I really like about the charger. I do like the light panel. We've got one here and one just near the socket there. You can customize those. In the setup we've got here, we're gonna leave them as a, as a nice white light so we can uh, find the charger and you can dim that down as well if it's too bright for the uh, environment you've got the charger in. You can also customize the status light of the light bars while the charger's charging. So you could choose it to lightly pulse to indicate the charging and possibly have a different color. You might want a fiery red or something like that. And of course, another color when the charging cycle is complete. This light bar and obviously the other light under there as well will also indicate the status of the charger. So if there's something, a problem such as connectivity or the RCD's tripped or there's that rare PME fault, you will get an indication of that on that light bar. The charger itself, you can customize obviously the front color cover as well, which I've got some here. Let's just have a look what we've got here. We've got choices of, we've got the one here, aqua light, we've got deep coral, sky blue, midnight as a faceplate. So again, that gives uh, plenty of options. That's all some customers care about. What is the color of the charger? The other thing I like now, you know, do you have a tethered or untethered charger? Now I've changed my mind over the years and I now prefer actually a untethered charger. So you've got flexibility in the type of lead you use because charging points of cars are all over the place at the front at the back and it's good to have that flexibility and i like these stretchy leads here that doesn't come with the charger got that from somewhere else but what i do like a lot of tethered chargers when you when you plug this in it sticks out from the wall so actually even in a narrow driveway like that that can take up quite a bit of space but with this angled down design you plug it in and it stays rather slim with the wall Commissioning the charger is a straightforward process. Once you've downloaded the Seren app and set up a user account, it's just a case of scanning the QR code, which is either underneath the charger there, or there's one inside the electrical cover. We used that one because we could also check our data connection back to the ethernet port with those little flashing lights at the same time. I will leave a link to the charger in the description, but let us know what you think about this installation, some of the challenges we've had during the installation and any other questions you have about EV charging.